think that there has always been that effort, and from the point from the emerging economic point of view, RCEP has always been the more natural option. It's not so demanding. It's, it's in a sense more inclusive. It doesn't have a so restricted timetable, and it's less advanced in terms of its standards. These are not just negatives. They, they are positive, and you have to practice things first. If you will. I think that China has always been supportive of it. When the TPP debate went to the point where people thought that there would have been a Clinton administration, I felt that there was a shift in China. Instead of saying that um, TPP is wrong, it's geopolitical, we shouldn't consider this, there was more a thinking of the sort that, well, we didn't want, we didn't, we don't want this. And, um, but if Americans are saying that it will be inclusive, perhaps we should try to push it to that direction. Uh, in other words, the Chinese wouldn't rule it out as strongly as they used to, but said we're not ready for it quite as yet, but we may be relatively soon. This took some Americans by surprise. This was maybe a year or so ago, but it was never tested because it didn't come to that point. We didn't have a Clinton administration. In this situation, I do feel that Australians, Japanese, perhaps feel that you can have TPP minus one and thereby use that as a basis. I still kind of hold on to the view that TPP worked more for advanced economy interests, that it would have been very, even detrimental to a country like Vietnam at some point. Not at first, but if their supply is being generated from advanced economies rather than countries with which they have a comparative advantage, I think in the long run they might have been harmed by that. Uh, I argued the same with, uh, I was working with an Indian think tank, uh, Gatehouse, and I wrote a piece on that, and I argued that they, as well, are not ready for it, that, that you should monitor it, see where it goes. But the present situation is such that it, it leaves three things on the table. RCEP, that seems to be evolving on its own. TPP, that something will mess, but I believe that as we know more about NAFTA, by default we know more about life post-TPP. And then there's the FTAAP. I think that de facto China would like to go in that direction more and more, create a very inclusive uh, free trade agreement, but one that would have room definitely for China and the US. But it is uncertain whether Trump administration would accept even that. I couldn't understand for the best way why the Obama administration mixed the FTAP for TPP at one point, because TPP seemed to be more geopolitical than anything else. And when I traveled in the region, here and in other countries, and sometimes give presentations to US chambers of commerce, I could swear that two years ago, every American chamber was convinced that TPP is a matter of one year, perhaps. They were so sure it would come. So it takes a while to sort of readjust and, and uh, readjust your expectations in terms of the present situation. But the only thing that in the long run to me would make sense is FTAP, and everything else would be just a stepping stone to that direction.